arguments, but they are still feared and killed even for frivolous fashion. In his poem Snake, D. H. Lawrence marvels at a snake drinking from a water trough. He succumbs to irrational fear and impulsively throws a log at the very animal he admired moments before. He writes, And immediately I regretted it. I thought how paltry, how vulgar, what a mean act. I despised myself and the voices of my accursed human education, and I wished he would come back, my snake, for he seemed to me again like a king, like a king in exile, uncrowned in the underworld. This is Ingrid Newkirk with Peter, reminding us it's easy to be kind by choosing fake snake over real skin for belts, bags, and shoes. This is Jill with the One Life Radio Fueling Champions Minute. Did you know magnesium is a cofactor in more than 300 enzyme systems that regulate diverse biochemical reactions in the body, including protein synthesis, muscle and nerve function, blood glucose control, and blood pressure? Magnesium is required for energy production, oxidative phosphorylation, and glycolysis. That's a mouthful. How do you know if you're getting enough? Signs and symptoms of possible magnesium deficiency include restless leg syndrome, agitation, insomnia, muscle stiffness, cramping, and aches. Well, where do you find magnesium? Food sources include raw almonds, leafy greens like cooked spinach and chard, raw cashews, pumpkin seeds, black beans, avocados, and my favorite, dark chocolate. Don't forget those Epsom salt baths and be smart about supplementation. This has been the One Life Radio Fueling Champions Minute. Dream, 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 dream. Welcome back to One Life Radio, everyone. This is Bernadette with Diamond Gray, Aviana Berrientos, Sean Wells, and Dr. Dominic D. Agostino. Uh, he is a tenured associate professor in the Department of Molecular Pharmacology and Physiology at the University of South Florida, Morsani College of Medicine. He is also a research scientist at the Institute for Human and Machine Cognition, that's IHMC. His laboratory develops and tests nutritional strategies and metabolic based supplements for neurological disorders, seizures, cancer, and metabolic wellness. He was a research investigator and crew member on NASA's Extreme Environment Mission Operation, NEEMO-22, and has a personal interest in environmental science and methods to enhance safety and physiological resilience in extreme environments. His research is supported by the Office of Naval Research and the Department of Defense, uh, private organizations and foundations all around the world. Such an honor to have Dr. Diagostino on the show. Welcome, Dominic. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me. Well, it's great to have you on the line with us. And of course, you heard Sean Wells is in studio with us as well. Hey, and I Dom. know you, you guys are friends. Yeah. Hey, Sean. Yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> Isn't it like he's the most humble guy and yet like this I know. resume is that was a, insane. How did I do reading it? <laughs> it was that's a pretty it was a pretty wordy uh, resume, right? <laughs> yeah. And he's but, had a TED talk. And he's so. had a TED talk. But uh you know Dr. Diagostino, uh everyone I want to let everyone know you can find him at ketonutrition.org. That's ketonutrition.org and if you're new to the keto world, it's k e t o nutrition.org. Uh so so great to have you on the air today. We're we're talking about sleep enhancers and sleep disruptors. So what um, impact does sleep have on metabolic health? Yeah, it, it has a huge impact. Actually, I, I think of sleep as really being part of uh, kind of like a health trinity, right? We say diet and exercise. We use those terms a lot, but it should really be diet, exercise, and sleep. Yeah. And if you're not getting, for me, like seven hours of sleep, putting that in my schedule, and it's very important for people to be on a schedule uh, to get seven hours consistently, because if you don't, it really impacts, like I have a non-negotiable seven hours of sleep on my schedule. It can really crush your immune system, Yeah. you know, and if you're getting frequent colds and, and you're just feeling tired and things like that, that's part of it. But the data, I mean, just is going right to the science. Your rates of cancer, if you sleep six hours a night of sleep or consistently get seven, uh, your rates of cancer are like two or three times higher. That was kind of hard for me to believe when someone told me that. Mm -hmm. But fact-checking that out, you look at shift workers and things like that, 
so rates of cancer, Alzheimer's disease, uh, you know, blood pressure is elevated. Uh, hunger is significantly elevated if you're missing out on sleep. Uh, and even things like psychiatric disorders, anxiety, depression. Mm-hmm. Diabetes. These are astronomically is higher. higher. Yeah, type 2 diabetes, the big one. Uh, these, these are astronomically higher if your sleep is disrupted. And if you do have things like anxiety or depression, they put you on drugs, and that makes the sleep even worse. Wow. So it's really important for us to not only focus on diet and exercise, but really to consider sleep being part of that sort of health trinity. And, you know, I teach at a medical school and uh, I'm going to start working this into my my lectures too, because they get very little education on nutrition, mm-hmm. right? And that has been, you know, trying to work that into the curriculum is, is a bit challenging. But doctors are really not formally trained in nutrition and sleep medicine. And, and nutrition and sleep are really the two biggest things that impact our overall human health and wellness and so we need to take it upon ourselves to educate ourselves on what's how to optimize this absolutely why do you think they're not educated on it well i think it's just (laughs) the the thinking is that it's it's not a problem and that sleep should come natural to us you know you just go to bed at night but we are really the modern society has really uh influenced our our sleep behaviors and really in, in a very bad way. I mean, uh, exposure to LED lights, blue lights, when the sun, after the sun goes down, we're really supposed to be synchronized uh, to the sun. So Mm -hmm. I'm a real big believer in getting natural light, especially in the first part of the day to really start the clock. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're also, there's also a culture, and I'll I'll have to say that I was maybe guilty of this in in academia and and really just kind of working to get tenure and stuff at the university, kind of pulling all-nighters, you know, working on a grant or working on a deadline. And it was kind of like a badge of honor if you spent a night or two, you know, and you didn't get any sleep or you're crossing time zones to go give a talk in some country and Mm -hmm. you have like seven flights. And, you know, I I would almost like brag about not having sleep, uh, which is, it's it's bad. And, And maybe I was living in denial, but I was definitely not optimized. I, I, I've discovered ways to kind of cope with that and be functional, Mm -hmm. but it's not optimal and it's really paying a a, a big impact on on your overall health. Yeah, a big price. And I think that that's part of the price of success, especially in the early years. I know I used to do it. Uh, Anybody I know that's had a high level of success has always dealt with uh, with sleep issues. Um, And so let me ask you this. In in your article, you talk about four sleep disruptors in your article. Uh, Can we go through them? Let's start with alcohol in the evening. I'm so guilty of that, Dr. (laughs) D'Agostino. I'm just like so guilty of it. Yeah, you know, I I actually, I do have alcohol. I had it last night, but what I do now, I had a couple dramatic, really sleep disruptions from alcohol. And I was, it was pretty shocking that a relatively small amount, like two, I remember distinctly being at a conference and having a late meal was like uh, nine or 10. And, uh, and I was tired. I was really tired because I was, I've been on the road quite a bit. And I had two glasses, which is two bigger, bigger glasses. I mm-hmm. think they were maybe 10 or 12 ounces. It's a lot more than I normally consume with red meat. And that sort of slows the digestion. And I just woke up cranky and I looked at, I tracked my sleep with the aura ring. And with I a like, what? Wow, I didn't even, the aura ring, it's O-U-R-A. It's a, it's a device. It's a ring that you wear and it gives relatively, it has a good algorithm for sort of calculating your sleep, total sleep time and sleep architecture, your REM versus non-REM. Interesting. Sleep. And you wear it on yeah. your finger? I wear it on my finger. Yeah, okay. it's like a Fitbit, <laughs> but uh, a little more advanced, I would say, especially the newer versions of it are, are really fantastic. And you can wear it as a Fitbit and it can track activity, but I, I just keep it by my bed and just track my sleep. And, so and interesting. we actually used it as part of the NASA NEMO uh, 22 mission, and we'll be using it. Uh, they were kind enough to actually donate it for, for research. So the astronauts had it, and, and we've, we've been collecting quite a bit of very good data with it. It's, it's I was very impressed with it. And I've, I've basically put it, I mean, I've 
lived with it under crushing levels of pressure. I've been in and out of salt water, wear, wear, wear it at the gym and in the mud and the dirt, and it's still functioning perfectly. Wow. Um, but it, it does track sleep very well, and it gives me a really good insight into what makes me sleep good and, and what disrupts my sleep. And alcohol is one of those things. Well, and sure. alcohol, I know in the article you wrote about how alcohol affects your heart rate. How so? Yeah. So, uh, well, I would like to mention that I actually do continue to, to drink, but I'll, I'll have, uh, I, t- I generally tend to drink <laughs> Me too. like a, a glass of wine as I'm making my meal. So it's kind of digested and metabolized before I actually eat. But if ah. I have it after six and I have it with a meal, well, then it tends to slower. There's, it slows the, the digestion and metabolism to where it's probably still in my system when I sleep. So I find that I can have a glass or two, say, before six or seven before a meal, and I sleep perfectly Mm -hmm. that way. But if I have it at like eight or nine or ten after I've eaten, then I I see a clear sleep disruption. Yeah. Uh, So I I actually drink a a, a low sugar wine, dry farm wines, Mm -hmm. a whole array of of less than one gram. I'm familiar with it. I actually pitched Todd this morning (laughs) about being a sponsor of the show, and I mentioned your name. (laughs) So that's really crazy. Um, But yeah, there's a lot of companies out there that, uh, you know, uh, Wine Fellows is another one, and uh, there's a Mm -hmm. lot of companies now that are, are making the low sugar wine that's keto friendly, if you will. Um, but yeah. uh, and, 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 and you know what? That I, you know, you have to do that if you're going. Like I drink not a lot, okay, but I do drink wine with with my meal almost every night, uh, Doctor uh, Diagostino, and yeah. and it's just part of my culture. It's part of who I am. You know, I was I was raised Italian, and it's just part of our culture. Same, yeah. Same yeah. here. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Just have a, a wine with meal, and I tend to have it, uh, you know, as part of the meal prep and a kind of eat it in the early part of my meal. Mm -hmm. Uh, But yeah, so having it as far as heart rate, you know, what you will see if you are metabolizing alcohol when you fall asleep is that it will induce an elevated heart rate. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's for a number of reasons, but it can really disrupt uh, your REM sleep, but also disrupt the transition into the non-REM sleep, the Mm -hmm. deep sleep. So it disrupts both, both restorative sleep cycles. What, what about eating dinner after 8 p.m.? Same, same thing. Uh, it can really uh, elevate your heart rate and your body temperature, too. It could be elevated in some individuals uh, by eating too late at night. And uh, your body temperature really has to drop about a degree or two before you fall asleep. Really? So it's, it's really important to... Yeah, to set your temperature, you know, a little bit lower at night. We have a nest system in our house where it will sort of warm up in the morning and then uh, cool off a little bit at night at about 67, 68. And then that's, it's super important for your body to cool off. Uh, Taking a hot shower can actually, or a bath, can increase your temperature, but the vasodilation you get from that when you get out of the shower, that helps to cool your body down. So wow. it can relax you and ultimately cool your body down. So that's a good way to fall asleep, like a warm, a hot shower or a hot bath. Uh, it's warming your body, but when you get out, the vasodilation actually causes your body to release heat, mm-hmm. and that can initiate uh, uh, your sleep. So for me, mm. if for, it's just falling asleep, getting my mind clear to fall asleep is really the, the important thing. And eating too late can kind of sort of disrupt all that. <laughs> and you say e- eating in the or exercising in the evening. I do that too. I dance a lot of times, you know, at night. Like after we have dinner, I give my yeah. myself a little time to digest the food, and then my daughter will go down and do her homework, and I'll turn on the Sonos and I will exercise and dance. So I'm, I'm not, I shouldn't yeah. be doing that either. <laughs> Well, I, whenever you can get an exercise, yeah, yeah. do it. Uh, so for me, the, the hardest thing uh, to, was to really get my workouts. And what I'm really talking about is like like heavy deadlifts and things that the type of workout strength training that activates your sympathetic nervous system. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you know, heavy strength training can kind of do that. But what we usually do is, you know, we'll have dinner and everything. And I think it is good to go – and get your body moving after dinner, but uh-huh. not to do strenuous. I should probably preface that, no strenuous okay. exercise after. But we go, I think it can actually facilitate sleep to go for a nice walk 
uh, after dinner because that just sort of helps clear. Maybe if you've had some alcohol yes. too, helps clear that from your system. The old so after a, dinner walk, right? <laughs> yes, yes, super important. No after dinner, you know, crazy all out deadlifts or squats or things like that. Gotcha. Try to save that for late afternoon or if you if you're a morning person. Gotcha. Maybe good to do it in the morning. Well, we have to go to break uh, here in just a second. But one more thing: consuming caffeine past noon. Yeah. Uh, 